Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Battling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Dutch T Show, where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today is just such a day, because we're still in Trofinet's month of memes. Might be the last one, might be the second to last one that we're doing this month. Um, well, especially the one this month, because it's almost the end of November, but it might be in this season the uh, second to last one. I still have a Monsters deck that I definitely want to share as well. But today we're going into Syndicate again. And I know you guys love a good Syndicate deck that is a little bit different. And that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today. Because today, as you might have already seen by the uh, amazing card that we're looking at right now, we're going to be playing the Super Seducer deck. So the Super Seducer deck might be already something that you now know what it's going to be. It's basically built around the um, archetype, well not really archetype, it's built around building a swarm of uh, Sly Seductresses and those cards are really really interesting. They're bonded cards over here, so the 5 provision Sly Seductress allows you to, well, she basically gains a point whenever your opponent plays a unit or when she is bonded to another Sly Seductress, she gains a point whenever your opponent plays a card, regardless of whether it's a special artifact or a unit card. Meaning that in this meta, this deck is actually pretty good. I managed to basically defeat every type of meta deck there is, aside from maybe Assimilate, I'm really struggling with Assimilate just because that they can copy my tactics with this deck. Otherwise, I've beaten uh, Mages, I've beaten um, Skellige, both a Reckless Flurry and the, um, the, uh, the Druid version. It is just that good, just because there's a lot of ways that those kinds of deck play decks play multiple cards in a single round and that of course boosts every single slice seductress so we're going to be focusing on creating a lot of slice seductresses and of course that means a lot of blind eye cards we are using the hidden cash leader ability and also of course the scenario card the passive flora but we're going to go through each and every single card one by one if you're interested in the deck you have the link to the play grant website the deck list is right there you can select it from the description down below and import it into your own game don't forget to upvote it as always i've seen you guys doing that very diligently so thank you for that support so far but uh, this deck will definitely uh, be using that as well because the super seducer deck i think this might be pretty nice uh, for you to play around with but if you're not interested in me going through every single card and just want to see some action you can skip right ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below for everybody still here, let's go through each and every single card in detail. First up, we have the Little Street Urchins. Two power for four provisions and on deploy, giving you three coins. And for every single coin that you uh, spend on this card, you boost these Street Urchins by one. Basically just creating a bigger, bigger swarm of Street Urchins, but uh, just signified by a single card. A good spender, and of course also a Blind Eyes, which is what we're focusing on in this deck. Next up are the Passiflora Peaches, our first set of Seductresses. Four power for four provisions and all on Horde 4, but we're using the Hidden Cash Leader ability, so that will be decreased by 2. So if you have 2 coins in your coin pouch or more, you will boost the Passiflora Peaches by 1 at the end of every one of your turns. So a very cool little engine card. Next up is another little spender card, the Sea Jackal 4 power for 4 provisions and on, um, well, if you spend 2 coins on this card, you will boost it by 2, but if you have 5 coins or more, he will boost himself by 3 instead. So especially with Hidden Cash, a very good spender uh, to just end the rounds with, to spend your uh, excess coins with, because um, you will gain a 50% markup on your coin expenditure, giving you 50% more points from each coin. And we have a few crime cards. We have two shakedowns, which is gonna come in handy to boost up some of the uh, generated copies that we'll be using with Idaion. But the uh, shakedown, giving you three coins and also boosting an allied unit by three. Very, very simple. And then we also have two cards that do the exact opposite, also giving you three profit, dip in the Pontar, but damaging an enemy unit by three instead. So giving you a little bit of removal options. Then to thin our deck a bit, we have the Sewer Raider, so four power for five provisions, but if you deploy this card and you have two coins or more in your pouch, you will summon the copy uh, from the deck. So giving you eight points for a single five provision card and a bit of thinning. Next up, we have the card that it is all about. So the Sly Seductress, four power for five provisions, and this is the card that we will be spamming 
on the board um, like a lot. Uh, I should be able to show you this in a few example matches so you'll see this in action in a minute. But uh, she also has an extra ability where she can be used to spend three coins and she gains a shield in return. So it might be handy to protect her a little bit. But as long as she's on the board, whenever your opponent plays a unit, you boost the discard by one. But if she's bonded, so if there's another slice seductress on the field, you do this regardless of card type. So whenever your opponent plays a card, you boost her by one, which can have a devastating effect to your opponent's plays. Because if you have enough cards, uh, well, slice seductresses on the board, that means that every time your opponent plays a card, they will need to aside from whatever you played before, circumvent every single point of those slice seductresses that they themselves generate. So it, to my mind, it is a cooler way of dealing with a swarm than with the cut-ups, because I've seen that cut-up deck, that cut-up swarm deck going around, but this seems a little bit more interesting to me, because it's just really fun to see your board light up with a lot of boosts every time your opponent plays a card. So for example, that means if you have six slice seductresses on the board, whenever your opponent plays a card, you will gain six points. That means that your opponent's card, when they play it, should be higher than those six points. Otherwise, nothing changes points-wise. So uh, it's really, really strong. Then to stay with the blind eyes, we have Adelbertus Kalkstein. Five power for six provisions give you two coins. And for every two coins you spend, you can purify a unit. So very handy to take out locks on your Slice Seductresses or any of your other engine cards. Then Sol de Navarrete is not a blind eye card, but a very good card that works incredibly well with hidden cash. So four power for seven provisions, and depending on the amount of coins you have, he will boost himself by one, two, or three. And the cap for us is a one coin, boost him by one, four coins, boost him by two, and seven coins boosts him by three. So you don't need to have a full coin pouch to boost soul by three every single turn. Next up, of course, always we use uh, Horse and Freak Show in pretty much every Syndicate deck. So four power and one armor gives you two coins. For every two coins you spend on this card, if he's on the melee row, you damage an enemy unit by two. So another bit of removal. Next up, we want to be spawning Sly Seductresses. We want to be creating more of them so we do have the Operator, since there aren't many other options to generate more Sly Seductresses. The Operator spawns and summons a base copy of a bronze unit from your hand to this row on each player's side. Um, if you use a Slice Seductress for this, of course, that means that your opponent also gets one. But there's not that many cards in this deck that actually play multiple cards in a row. So your opponent will have less of a benefit than you do. And of course, you will be able to copy them even further. Um, if you don't want to have that happen, you can also, of course, copy a Passiflora Peaches which is going to give you the benefit of the engine, but not your opponent, unless they're also playing Syndicate or Nilfgaard, since that gives them coins as well. Then we have Furco the Sculptor, another thinning card where you pull a crime card from your deck, so two power for eight provisions, and just gives you that option to pull a, uh, any of the Shakedown or Dip in the Pontar cards and just thin your deck a little bit further. Next up, we have one of the most important cards in this deck, Idaran of Olivo. You must have seen this card a lot over the past few weeks, um, but we're going to finally be using them him ourselves. So six power for eight provisions, and the first time you spawn a unit, each turn on your side of the board, you spawn a one power copy of it on the row that Idaran is on, and then give it Doom. So those cards don't survive when they are killed. They get removed from the graveyard immediately, but Idaran can give you an extra Slice Seductress for each one you spawn every single turn so this can spiral out of control really really quickly then of course we're playing with slice seductresses so who else you saw him in the uh, the play menu before as well so adriano the mink six power for eight provisions gives you two coins and that profit is increased by one for each allied slice seductress so this uh, this man can give you a full co coin pouch in one and if you spend five of those coins on him you can also spawn another slice seductress on the row not played so it is only one card that you play and on top of that of course he triggers Idaran as well to give you another slice seductress so this is the first time we're going to be spawning a slice seductress there's a few more options in this deck for that next up of course we need to be protecting Idaran so Azar Javad is perfect for that five power for nine provisions gives you three coins and on deploy you spawn a scarab which is a one power one armor defender unit and if you pay three coins, the three coins that he gives you, you can get two for the price of one. Uh, very good at defending because not a lot of uh, decks actually are able to take out both defenders in a single turn. 
Next up, we have our next spawner, Igor the Hook. Six power for nine provisions, and he has insanity, which means we haven't really seen that a lot uh, lately, but insanity means that you can also use his um, health as a way of using his fee ability. So his fee ability requires five coins. If you are at six power, you can still use his fee ability by reducing his power to one, so taking five off of his power. Um, the fee ability is spawn and summon a base copy of a bronze allied unit to Igor's row, which is um, which you can do every single turn. And of course, we're going to be using to spawn another Sly Seductress. Again, we're spawning, so either one will trigger as well. As long as this card is on the board and you have enough coins, you will be able to keep doing this. So uh, very, very powerful in this deck. Now we have another uh, tutor card, so Vivaldi, Bank, Tree, Profit, and you just get to look at all the cards on top of your deck. Um, the, the more coins that you have, the further you'll be able to look in your deck, and you can choose whatever card you want to play, and then you pay up the amount of coins that that card is um, distanced from the top card in your deck. So if you choose the third card in your deck, you will be spending two coins to play that card. Very powerful card, especially in the later rounds, you will be able to guarantee a card from your deck if you're missing something. Then, finally, we're using the card ourselves, the Mushy Truffle, a location card that has, of course, resilience, so it stays on the board for one round. And on deploy, you spawn and play a bonded unit from your starting deck. That bonded unit, of course, is going to be a Slice Seductress, so another one on the board. Idaran is going to be triggered on top of that as well. And on order, you spawn and play Golden Frot, so giving you three uh, times a two hour boost on adjacent units. Very powerful card, especially to give you some carryover. We're playing Syndicate, so you also have some uh, coin carryover, but this is just an extra six points in your next round. And just for removal's sake, I think a, this is a card that can be swapped out for something like Philippa Alhart or something, uh, but Karate Heatwave can just take out something really big, because otherwise we don't have tall removal in this deck. So Karate Heatwave, banish a unit or an artifact. Very, very handy to take out those big threats, especially behind the defender, because you can use uh, Kalkstein to get rid of the defender first. And then finally we have the scenario card, the Passive Flora. Uh, progresses whenever you play a Blind Eye, which is why this deck is filled with them. Uh, when you play this card, you get a Passive Flora Peaches on the same row, so again, we've seen what those cards do. When your next blind die is played, you get six coins, so try to keep that in mind as well, so you don't overspend. And then the last one is another spawning of a Sly Seductress. So again, triggering Idaran, you can basically get three Sly Seductresses in a single turn with just this final chapter. Very, very powerful card, so we do really want to play this whenever we can. Stratagem is the Crystal Skull, just to give us a bit of a veil and four extra points. And then, of course, the leader ability is Hidden Cash, where every round we will be able to gain three coins, so don't forget to use that. And every single horde requires two less coins to trigger, as we discussed. So every horde ability we talked about already reduced it by two. And that's it for this uh, Super Seducer deck, so uh, let's head into a few example matches and see how that works out for us. And our first matchup is against Skellige, so the uh, the Druid's Skellige Battle Trance. We're gonna have to see. If it's the rain version, I might be in trouble, but it doesn't seem to be. Um, there are no Rio guns popping up. We have a lot of crime cards here. I don't really necessarily need them, so I'm gonna get rid of those for now. Um, we get the Operator. We can use them to get another Passive Flora Peaches, but we don't have a Passive Flora Peaches, so I might just get the Sea Jackal out. Um, and get rid of Dip in the Pontar again. Ooh, that's a really gold-filled hand. I might actually play this pretty slow to begin with. So again, this is Skellige, so we're gonna get the discard package pretty soon, I'm assuming. Um, I do want to generate some coins to start, so I am... I could use the Street Urchins for that, or I just use... Hmm... Well, I can definitely use the Leader Ability, so we need to get those three coins first. Yeah, probably best to just use the Street Urchins. So there we go, we get to six coins immediately, which is one shy of what we need for Soul, because uh, we definitely don't want to play Soul here at uh, six, which is what he's going to be at now. So I think I'm just going to use Furco to deal, although it's Battle Trance, so he will be healing uh, whenever they play something fancy. So I'm just going to use Shakedown, or do I use Horse and Freak Show? No, Shakedown is fine, we can put that on the Street Urchins. 
going up to five and nine coins in the back. And we got a gutting slash, which is just reducing our sweet urchins back to one. But now we can actually put Sol the Navarrete down. He's going up to seven. Yeah, and I can actually use two coins to spend on the street urchins for now, uh, just to keep them at seven. Seven coins is enough to get sold to uh, seven every single turn. We get some rain on top of that, and then the Giga Scorpion Decoction, of course, with the rain. Kind of forgot about that. Okay, fair enough. So there goes Sol. Um, I can still use Furco now. Um, I am... Wait, I'm gonna have to put these street urchins up a little bit. And now we can use Furco the Sculptor into a dip in the Pontar and get rid of that little Hofru right over there. Uh, and I could actually spend another coin here. Don't need to have nine. And then we get Merge Roam onto one of the crows. And we got hit with another batch of rain. I think it's probably best for me to now use the Sea Jackal. The Sea Jackal can actually spend some coins. And I just want to see if our opponent goes to four cards or not. Um, with the Sea Jackal, I can now get ten points. So that's going to be an close enough. So I can do 1 and then 2, that's going to put them to 10, that's going to be 14, 18. And there we go, we get the pass there. I think I'm actually just going to get Operator down, because um, that gives us final say, which is, should be enough. Um, and we still have Horse and Freak Show here as well, so that's stop it there, and that's 19, 18, which is just perfect. Giga Scorpion Decoction is already gone, so that means that our opponent has limited removal options now. So if he can spam the Slice Seductresses as much as possible, and we get two of them. Uh, so that is really good. We get both of them here. Um, so we can get rid of Shakedown for now. Azai Javid is also basically a very important part of this deck. So I think I'm going to get rid of one Slice Seductress. I lost the Operator already, so I might as well get rid of one and hope for Adriano. We don't get him yet, and we also don't get the Sewer Raider, so there's no point in pushing this any further, although we could. We could. Although we don't have Ideon, we don't have the Mushy Truffle, and we don't have Adriano. There's still plenty of good cards in our deck that I really want to grab, so... 7 out of 10. And we might actually get hit with a Mushy Truffle ourselves now. No, the Crow Mother, which is also carryover, basically. Because they're going to get those four points back. But there we go. Lost the round there, but nothing to scoff at just now. That would actually be a pretty cool combo if you had Philippa. If you have Philippa, you could actually get the Crow Mother, get it killed. And then you can get it back later on. Um, dip in the Pontar might be useful. I really like Idaron. There we go. So Idaron is good. I could get rid of the dip in the Pontar then. I still have Vivaldi Bank, so if I can get something like Mushy Truffle, all the better indeed. So now we're going to have to set up a few things. Um, so we get the Covenant of Steel, that is not that much of a problem. We can get rid of the Defender there. Um, but now I need to be really careful with my coin expenditure. So let's get Azar Javed in the back here. So pay the tribute and get the two Defenders down. That is just to set up a defender for the Idaran in a minute. If we can get to that without our opponent taking out our defenders, then we're good to go. So we get Dagur. Dagur is going to be annoying, but we can take him out later on. So I'm not too bothered about him just yet. So let's put Idaran behind the defenders, which are now basically... Yeah, we, we, we can... Use either on at least once now. Um, we get Fukushima. Fukushima is gonna resurrect. I don't know what Fukushima is gonna resurrect. The crows. Okay, so that's five turns of rain. Um, that actually gives me a little bit of time. Because I can now use the mushy truffle and get our first slice seductress on the field. So that's one over there and one over there. Um, and I'm going to use Hidden Cash now, because um, I'm going to use it next. Although I don't need to. I don't need to just yet. So now we have the two Slice Seductresses. You'll be seeing them boosted every single time our opponent plays a card. Offering to the sea. Ooh, slam. Okay, that was, a, that was a nice one. And that might be the end of the Defender. It is not. 
Um, which means that now I'm going to play Passiflora. So Passiflora over here, that gives us an extra um, peach. We can use our leader ability, so we have the two coins that are necessary to get the Passiflora peaches to boost. And then we use the, um, the Mushy Truffle Alchemy card to uh, get those boosts going. So there we go. Our engines are pretty much set up now. Um, but we, ooh, okay, okay, there goes, uh, there goes that, um, our defender is still alive though, I do want to spawn another slice of doctors, but we only have one at the moment, so what I'm going to do, this is pretty risky, but I'm gonna have to put Igor down without spending the coins for it, if I want to keep, yeah, I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna use Igor over here and have him spawn another slice of doctors in the row which gives us another one in the back there and i can actually take care of dogger by the way i forgot that i don't have the um yeah bolt card so this might actually not be enough but now i just need to spend as much time as possible generating more um yeah more and more of those slice of doctors. so what i'm gonna do is put horse and freak show in the front then use Igor's ability to spawn another slice seductress, and that gives us five already. But I don't have enough coins to trigger the peaches now. So there's Gedaneath. And we get more points on our slice seductresses. And then we get Adriano. Adriano can actually go in the back here, although we'll get another one spawned over there, so no. I'm gonna use Adriano. He generates enough coins to actually get us another slice seductress. And that is also enough to keep going. And you can see that every time our opponent plays a card, we get 7 points now. So that includes the card that Gedeni just generated. So we almost kept up with our opponent. I still have Vivaldi Bank. And I don't think it really matters which card that I actually take. So I'm just going to use Vivaldi... I can't use Igor anymore. So Vivaldi Bank... What do I want to actually get here? If I can get... Ah, oh, we'll see what we get. Okay, we can get Shakedown or Dip in the Pontar. Dip in the Pontar would give me 9 coins, which would be really nice. So let's just get Dip in the Pontar on the Damaged Crow Beast. And then I can actually just... Yeah, I can actually get another Igor down. So that is too bad, and I can get another Slice of Doctors down. I should have probably done that first. So that's get it down over here and we get the mushy truffle which is another well three cards basically i should have played the slice of Doctors first so there we go another three three points and another seven points so we basically equal the amount of points that the um the crow clan preaches generate so i'm gonna just get this on the board as well so another slice of Doctors uh, over here i could try and take out something with the coins because I don't need that many coins. I don't really need that many coins. So I'm just going to use this and this. There we go. Make a little bit of a space. Because we get two points from the peaches. And now we're going to get eight points for every slice seductress. So that is going to be one alchemy card. And if our opponent, whatever our opponent now does, we're just going to get equal points. Um, so the Murdrome generates more points for us. And then even the Frot is going to generate also a lot of extra points for us. There we go. Um, and then we put the last Passiflora Peach down. And we can actually use two more... No, one more tick from uh, the Freak Show. But we get three points from the Generating Engines. And there we go. 129 points against what can only be described as what... Uh, yeah, the, the perfect Druid deck over there. So they had all their cards. And we just managed to overpower them completely with the Slice Seductresses. The power of the Slice Seductresses. And next up, we have a Syndicate deck. A Blood Money deck, nonetheless. Hmm. Gonna be interesting. Um, I can purify away most of the bounties, but... Still, this might be tricky. I haven't played this matchup yet. We get rid of the double crimes. We can actually get rid of another one. Um, yeah, just get rid of Dip and the Ponder as well. We get another Street Urchin. Ah, that's fine, I guess. Um, not the greatest starting hand, but we can always start with a Street Urchin. 
and then pushing that over it with hidden cash. There we go. Six coins to start. Might be pretty good. And we can actually just get the a big sea jackal on there. We got a tax collector to start. I'm actually just going to take that out with Horses Freak Show. Um, there we go. I can get that going. And then I can just use the Crystal Skull on uh, Horses Freak Show itself. I protect that a little bit better. And we get the Casino Bouncers. Not that much of a problem. Um, I could get the Sea Jackal out. But uh, not that useful right now. So let's just use... Furco the Sculptor into a shakedown onto our little street urchins, giving us a bit more coins for later on. Again, we don't need to overplay this because we're comfortably in the lead. We have seven coins, our opponent has none. We're seven points ahead. And then we get Fistect. I don't want to purify that away yet. I feel like that would be a little bit of a waste. So I'm not going to even react to that poison. Um, so we're going to be playing just a Sea Jackal dry. That would be interesting. Let's just get Horse and Freak Show over there. And then just use another Shakedown on Furco the Sculptor. There we go. Still giving us 8 coins. Still giving us a 12 point lead. Yeah, a 12 point lead. And there goes more tinning. Could put down the Sea Jackal now. And just use it twice because it's horde five so as long as i have more than five coins when i activate the ability i'm fine so this is another 10 points there we go and that's 14 points ahead with the same amount of coins in the bag so if our opponent doesn't pass i think i probably am gonna pass just because of the fact that we're pretty far ahead and then we get poisons that's just that's only eight points um, so we're six points ahead. And the Sea Jackal is still on the field. I could use him twice again if I use the the Urchins. I don't think I need to. Six points is still hefty enough, but with the Spender they can get out of it, of course. But with Hidden Cash, you actually want to try and get those three rounds. Because you can, if you play every round, then you get those nine coins in total, which is always nice. And if you get lucky and still get the Mushy Truffle, we have a huge amount of carryover. So there we go, we even get the Tutor out of the way. So Vivaldi Bank, three coins, and then they'll get to play whatever they want. They'll still have to calculate a way out of this, but with just a spending, they can get out of this easily. I think Sea Jackal is normally up to seven hordes. So, with a single Sea Jackal, they get 7 points, so that should be enough. Unless, of course, they lose coins by playing that Sea Jackal. Which is definitely a possibility. Seems like a very difficult choice. Um, and we get the Witch Hunter Executioner. That is not enough. Yeah, because that's not going anywhere. We only get one bleeding. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that was completely unnecessary, because now they need to play another card. That was a serious misplay. And they got rid of one of their... Um, they're damage dealers, assuming this is a bounty deck. And we get Kurt. Okay. Now, I do have a plan against bounty. We do still have uh, this buddy. This buddy, Kalkstein, can uh, remove bounties aplenty. And if I can get other Javet, but we'll at least get the Mushy Truffle. So we have guaranteed carryover. And the Peaches I'm going to keep, just because the fact that I can copy that. So the Street Urchins would be a nice... Oh, there we go. Yeah, we get the forfeits. Okay. That was a misplay on their, uh, their part. Um, but still, I would have been pretty good at winning this now. Because I had the carryover of Hidden Cash and the carryover of m m the uh, Mushy Truffle. So that was nine points in carryover. So uh, we definitely would have won that. But on to the next one. Next up is the Dreaded Assimilate, the double cross that we're going to be facing. So there is a tactic to play against this, but we're gonna have to be very, very careful. Um, our hand is actually pretty good though, um, so we might be able to pull something out of this. I usually usually don't like the Operator Slice Seductress thing, but since our opponent is Nilfgaard and they get can get Slice Seductresses anyway, I don't mind all that much. So Street Urchins are good, I'm gonna get rid of the Sea Jackal for now and get either on as well. This is a really good starting hand. Maybe even too good. I'm gonna keep it as is. And we're gonna see how far that we're getting with this. So first up, I usually try to start pretty slow. 
So I'm gonna put the Passiflora Peach down, uh, veil it, and then use the, uh, the leading ability. There we go. So three coins, and that ends the turn, and we get a nine point Passiflora Peach, which can be destroyed, of course, by a Vincent van Morleham, but I wanna get as many of those cards out of the way at the start. We get Alba Pikeman. Okay, do I play Operator now already? Might actually seem like the better option here. Because um, if I play Operator into a Slice Seductress, our opponent gets an extra point, which is weird, because the Slice Seductress should have been there already. But yeah, she wasn't. But yeah, again, our opponent can definitely just take over those as well, so it's not that much of a, a hassle here. And we get hit on the Operator there. Um, now I'm going to use the Mushy Truffle as well. Our opponent won't get a point for the Mushy Truffle itself, so it is definitely still fine. Uh, I did use two of my four spawning options, uh, five spawning options, but it is what it is. So now we, ha we have a single point for every time our opponent plays a card. And then we get Ramon Tirconel, who's going to be pushing even more Alba Pikeman. And they're getting boosted as well, but that triggered all of our Slice Seductresses every single time. So that is not that much of a problem. I could get another Slice Seductress down, actually. Might as well, they're gonna get extra points every single time. So yeah, let's just do that. Just keep the engine flowing, the engines flowing. And we get another Alba Pikeman down, so that's four points every time, but we get three points every time. They play a card, so not, not that much of a problem. Let's put... Furco the Sculptor down, um, we're gonna be getting... I could use Dip in the Pond there, but that's not gonna help me out that much, so I'm just gonna use Shakedown onto that weakest Slice Seductress. And then I could use the Mushy Truffle, but I like the Carryover. Um, no, I'm gonna have to use it actually. Uh, I'm gonna have to use it. Um, just because of the Alba Pikeman will automatically trigger, so that's four points every single turn. And there we get a Rot Tosser, which is actually two cards. So that gives us extra... <laughs> and he kills his own Rot Tosser. Okay, um, that means that I can now pass technically. I could get the Street Urchin out just to get to... That's nine coins, and I can spend a few of those. So Street Urchin gives us nine. And then I can actually just do one. Yeah, one is enough. So that gives me four coins next turn. And I can just bolster that even further. Um, and I still get an extra point every single time. So our opponents can get that Sunset Wonder out to get the benefit here. We get another poison. Uh, I can't purify the poison, but what I can do is actually put down uh, Azar Javed. This is annoying. Um, so I can use the Sweet Urchins twice and then use Azar Javed over here and just defend those two. Like this. Um, our opponent will get four points, but I get one extra every time, so that's we're still ahead. And the Sunset Wanderers is out, which is also good. So that's Royal Decree, that's going to be three cards. Uh, two cards, but six points for me. And Royal Decree is out as well. So that's Royal Decree, Ramon de Cornell, the Sunset Wanderers, and Mushy Truffle. And then, and then Morale. Okay, that's not... Okay, fair enough. I'll just get... I'll just pass right now. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. Still have six coins. And there goes the poison, and now they need to play another card, which is giving us two points as well, but yeah. It's plenty. Plenty, plenty, plenty with those Alba Pikemen, but yeah, they spend a lot of their gold cards here. Uh, and we still have a very, very good hand. Um, I just need to get some crappy brawns out now, because otherwise... Oof! 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 Okay. This is really annoying, but I need to get rid of Horsens Freak Show. <laughs> oh, Vivaldi Bank. I really want that as well. Wait, what is still left? Orati Heatwave, that's basically the only card that's left. Um, I do have two blind eyes. Could actually keep this. Our opponent passes, okay, that's good. So I can get a full coin pouch by just using um, Vivaldi Bank and just get rid of something I don't really need. Oh, the Sewer Raid is perfect. 
Perfect. And that gets me to uh, eight coins as well, which is the max anyway for carryover. So there we go. That was that was just absolutely perfect. Okay, so we get four coins. And we get... We have Idaran even. Idaran is going to be nice. If our opponent can take out Idaran immediately, then we're going to be in the advantage here. I'm going to get rid of Dip and the Pontar. And the Sea Jackal maybe even. No, it's going to be my only... Um, my only spender here. Uh, I still have Kuralti Heatwave. Do I need the extra slice seductors? I might as well need it. Um, do I get rid of Shakedown or not? Shakedown is too good to to not take. So yeah, let's just finish. What do I have? I still have Kuralti and Soul. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Kuralti. That's probably better than a Shakedown. Um, first up, Idaran. Idaran on the board immediately. Next up is going to be Passiflora Peaches, and then just keep... Uh, I can get rid of the, the other cards. So that's the Slice Seductress already. Um, so they definitely... That's what I was talking about. They definitely just try to take over your uh, your uh, tactic here. So I'm just going to do this. That doesn't give them an extra point in this turn. And I'm going to get those extra coins here. Then they get another Illusionist. And next up, I'm actually going to play... Igor first. No, it's probably better just to use Adriano now. I'm going to get the coins back. So I'm going to use Adriano. Which is going to give us a Slice Seductress immediately. And another one at um, either on side there. I could shield one, but I'm not going to. Next up is going to be Igor. Maybe get a Devil's Buff Ball. Poisoning a lot of units. Poisoning a lot of units. Um, I could... Purify them, but it's just not worth it, I think. Because uh, I can get Igor over here. Igor counts as a unit, of course, but now we're going to just copy a Slice Seductress. Uh, but but Idaran is going to die regardless, so this is fine. We're getting, we're getting pretty close to our, uh, our swarm here. And we get another poison on Idaran. That is absolutely fine. Um... Now, I'm gonna use another Slice Seductress here. We're gonna get another one from the scenario card. And then I can use Igor to get uh, another one down, because Igor uh, might be a big target here anyway. And that gives us a whopping seven Slice Seductresses. It's gonna be the maximum right now. Uh, but this can be another Devil's Buff Ball. Yeah, there we go. I'm hoping our opponent does use Double Cross now. So that means that they can Kurati um, something away. Probably gonna go for the Peaches there. Okay. That is fine. Because I have actually enough coins to purify all of them. Uh, so I can use Kalkstein here and just purify all of them. There we go. I think that's well worth the coins because I would have lost more points from uh, whatever they want to try and poison here. Rotosser is again two cards. And that is going to poison... I'm, I could just Korati the, uh, the cow carcass here. I think it's going to be more points. If I Korati the cow carcass, it's just... That. Because that was two poisons. If his other cards were still two poisons, that would have made a nine point difference. Yeah, so there we go. I think that was the better option and then the Sea Jackal doesn't really matter. Giving us two extra points, but whatever point card our opponent is going to play now, it's still six points extra on top of ours, even if it is another poison. Yeah. So we get six points out of that, even though it lost us 16. But there we go. That was not the assimilate tech that I was expecting, because we didn't even see Bratons or anything like that. But that was, um, yeah, shown the, uh, the power of the uh, Seductress Swarm. I think those matches uh, properly demonstrated the power of the Super Seducer deck because those uh, Slice Seductresses ba basically negate the f last few cards that your opponent can play if you uh, manage to uh, get a sizable swarm of uh, at least seven, because seven is a nice number, seven extra points for every card that your opponent plays is a hell of a lot. I had one match where I eventually lost, but it just shows you, I can, I'm going to show you the clip right now, it just shows you how much 
effect that it has, the amount of seductresses that you have when your opponent plays one card after the other. It was a persistent strike deck uh, with the Alzer combo, but every single card that was played just gave me a lot of points so I could keep up. Eventually I lost, so that's why I didn't include it in this, uh, in this episode, but still it was a very good example of a play that completely gets neutered by the seductresses. Again, you can find the entire list on the Play Grant website in the link, uh, well, with the link in the description down below. So definitely check that out and upvote it there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Because I'm going to end the episode here. So let me know what you think of the Super Seducer deck. I had a lot of fun building this deck as well. Uh, just trying out and see how it fares on the on, on pro rank. Uh, so definitely, definitely let me know what you think about it. If you have any tips to improve this deck, just let me know in the comment section down below. I have done a lot of experimentation with this deck, trying to combine it with the cut-ups. Um, but I feel like if you focus just completely on the Seductresses, it works out a lot better than just trying to sh shoehorn uh, a lot of cut-ups into there as well so uh, all the way going with the sexy ladies is uh, the way to go for me at least um, so with that said thank you guys enormously for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of quintage and uh, maybe we're gonna be able to slip in just one more in this season we'll see about that in the next episode of quintage so thank you enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode of quintage goodbye and stay nutty <laughs>